Hey everyone, Becky from Week 99 are here. So we mentioned in our last video that we're going to start building our own PC. This has been going on and being planned for quite a while now and there's a few reasons for it. Mostly because I don't always want to be tied to my laptop or have my laptop tied up when I'm trying to render 4K videos or at this point depending on what this camera outputs, 1080p, it really depends on what I'm trying to do. But to increase my workflow, we decided to build our own PC. It doesn't seem that hard, right? Here's the thing. I've never done this before. I've never built a PC. I've upgraded PC parts in one in the past, but that's when I worked at CompUSA back 20 plus years ago. It's been a few years. I'm comfortable enough with tools. I'm comfortable enough with computers. I just haven't done this before. So we're gonna change that today. We're gonna build our own 4K PC for about $1,000. But here's some things I wanna note. Um, the cost of the machine is very intentional. We plan on upgrading this later, adding more storage, adding more to it as we go. This is just what we need to process things now. That being said, we are only putting a 500 gigabyte solid state drive in there to run everything. We have enough external hard drives. Some are several terabytes, uh, including one from Western Digital they just sent us that we are going to be using to offload our videos so I can easily upload them. I also specifically chose a case that is white. Again, I've mentioned in the last video, most of the things in this office, the furniture, everything is white. I wanna keep with that aesthetic. Now, because the PC, the actual tower, will be sitting on the floor, we are not worried about RGB. As I mentioned in the last video, we are working with these new perifer peripherals that we got from Turtle Beach and Rocat. They are RGB. They are also black. So is the bevel on the monitor that we got, as well as the arm for the monitor, because I really didn't care as much, and it's a lot harder and a little more expensive to get white monitors that are PC-based. You can get them, but it wasn't a priority for me. Also keep in mind, this price point does not include the monitor. So all of that being said, another thing to consider, all of this was paid for out of pocket by me. This was not a sponsored post. The only components at this point that were provided by a company are the peripherals that are right here. Um, we do have a couple others like an external monitor in route that is going to be for feature on another day. So these are actually going to, these obviously, this video already went live. Um, so this is kind of being filmed out of sequence. You may have seen these in the first video and may have seen them lit up. At this point, they haven't been plugged in yet, but we're gonna be working on that. So the monitor and everything, we will list for all of the parts and everything that we got below. Also keep in mind, we bought most of this at Micro Center. You can do this online, have them ship to you. We use their Micro Center PC Builder app, or I guess plugin or whatever they have on their website, as well as the PC parts picker, that everything we had would be compatible with the other pieces. This makes it super, super easy, and everything all together comes in just about $1,000, and that includes tax. We did pick up everything except for the graphics card, that was shipped to us um, via Newegg because everything right now, graphic cards wise, is really hard to find. Now, on the note of the graphics card, we actually went with the GeForce RTX 2060. Now, there is a reason for that. That is because we do realize the 3000 series is out. However, they're out of stock everywhere. When we went to Micro Center, there was a big sign on the door saying they don't have any, don't even ask. So, Wow, this is not the top of the line. At this point, it is not the newest version. It is a version that will do everything that we need it to. And for what we are currently going to be doing and editing in um, Premiere and uploading on YouTube and all of that, the 2060 is absolutely fine. Not too concerned. Uh, the other components that we have at this point, like I mentioned before, we did get the Samsung 500 gig solid state hard drive just to start with. We will be adding more storage to this. Um, this is just to get us going. We have nothing for the M.2s at this point. This is just to get the machine up and going. 
So if you want to keep in the thousand dollar price point, this is probably a good place to start. You can always add on and we're looking forward to those Black Friday deals in a couple weeks to possibly add storage. At this point, we're just looking for something that can process everything that we need, including videos, as well as these large format scans that I'm going to be doing that's coming up in another project. We also got some G-Scale Rip Jaws. These are two 16 gig cards. So this is our RAM. This is what we need to make sure that we have the speeds to process what we need. We could have gone lower. I mean, I was working on eight gigs for a long time processing videos. 32 gigs is what my current laptop has. This is the speed I'm liking. This is where we're starting and there's a good chance that we will upgrade this really, really soon as well. Because while this is only 32 gigs, I believe that the MSI board I got can get up to 128 gigs of RAM. That is a dream. I don't even know that I need that speed, but it doesn't mean that I'm not gonna try. On that note, we went with the AMD B550 MSI board. This is going to be obviously everything to keep us going. So I'm not really gonna get into this too much until we are actually assembling. Um, like I said, I have not done this before, but I've looked to add how all of the pieces go here. So here's hoping I don't really screw this up. Now, two more pieces. We did go with the AMD Ryzen 5, Ryzen 5 third gen processor. Again, this is not the newest one out there. It is not the best one out there, but it is more than what we need for what we are building. So this is good starting place. All of these components can be upgraded as we go if we decide to, and it's very possible that we will. So last piece, we went with the Corsair RM750. So this power supply, probably an overkill for what we need. I think we calculated the wattage we need is gonna be like 375 and this is 750. We could get by with less, but because we plan on upgrading and because we plan on doing this um, over time and adding more things and adding more memory and you know, maybe RGB in the future, probably not, this will keep us going and make sure that we have what we need for a good long time. So on that, all of this, we are gonna be building it in a Landcool PC case, the tower. The Landcool 205, it is a white one with a tempered glass side. We'll be able to see inside and the cord management, um, but you won't really see the RGB. If there's any that's intentional, or if there's any it's unintentional, we did not pay for that extra because we really don't care about that. Um, and then Dell, we have a 27 inch 4K monitor that we will be mounting to the desk as well. So those are the pieces. We are gonna start building this and hopefully by the end of today, we have a working PC that we can show you. All right, everyone, we're gonna get into this. I took everything out of the packaging, I went and got my hair done, and now we're going to assemble this PC. So, everything is laid out, everything is where it needs to be, the case is behind me, and we are going to start now. All right. I'm gonna take this plastic static bag off of here. We haven't done this. Um, I did look over the instructions. I know I might have to remove the standoffs in order to get the fan on there.
All right, so there she is. She's completely built, first build ever, and overall it cost me just over a grand to get a 4K editing rig with all of the specs that I want. It has the 32 gigs of RAM, a 500 gig um, hard drive in there, solid state of course, so things run faster. I think when I installed Windows and Adobe and all of that, it took me under a half hour to get it up and running. But what I will tell you, it didn't go flawlessly. So the first issue I had was actually the um, CPU. The processor actually had a bent pin right from the factory. So I was struggling for quite a bit, trying to figure out what I did wrong, why it wasn't going in, and we ended up finding that it had a bent pin randomly in the whole mix. We checked the motherboard, there weren't any issues with it, um, and there was nothing that would have bent the pin and we didn't force it in, so there was no real reason for that to happen. But we ended up getting that switched out, no problem, put it in, Everything was fine. I was able to fire it up, except that it didn't post. I wasn't able to get a signal. One thing that I learned quickly, um, I mean, I was exhausted. It took me after the CPU issue, um, I got frustrated and I came back the next day to finish it. And then after I couldn't get a signal, I came back the next day. Being my first build ever, I was getting frustrated more than anything on just small little things and small little details. What I found out the next day when I came in to try to see what I hadn't connected right, to see what was wrong, one little cord just was not seated correctly. Popped it in, worked absolutely fine, got all the speeds. So would I do anything differently? I don't know. I don't know that I would. I mean, it was my first build. I have all of the specs that I want. It works beautifully. It looks beautiful. It's on right now. It's quiet. You can't hear it here in the office. Um, I have it next to the desk. It is down near the floor. It's on a little stand, so it gets plenty of air. Um, it is next to the cat's cute little hamburger bed that we're gonna talk about in another video. But um, I think for a first go, I didn't do too bad. I'm sure there's things I can improve on, cord management um, on the non-visible side, probably in future builds will be something I'll be working on. But I did know that as I was doing cords um, and plugging everything into the power supply, I kept figuring out and kept finding things that I was having issues plugging in, or it wasn't checking and reading the um, hard drive and I had to keep pulling kept pulling the hard or I had to keep pulling the power supply out of the system and each time like I figured it was the last time so I would screw it back in and then I'd have to unscrew it and take it out and do it again so next time I'll probably wait and leave the power supply out until everything posts everything is done and I know that it works but I'm happy with the machine that I did and it's a great starter one. I'm looking forward to Black Friday and I'm looking forward to finding deals on hard drives and expanding it and possibly upgrading some other components as we go. So if you are interested in any of the parts we got, like I said before, we picked them up at Micro Center all except for uh, the graphics card was from Newegg and I paid for all of them. But I will put links for them below if you're interested in getting them and building this machine yourself but not too bad for a first go. Let me know if you have any helpful tips. I'm sure there's things that I could improve on in the future builds. That's it. I will see you guys soon. We have a lot of tech and toys and a bunch of other random things coming in the next few weeks. So I will see you guys pretty soon as we start going through all of them. I'll catch you later. Bye.